our God has blessed us with many great gifts. And you know, of all the gifts that are out there, one of the greatest gifts I think our God has given us is the gift of music. St. Augustine is attributed to saying that the one who sings prays twice. I had a, a one sort of wise priest one explain about the importance of singing at Mass, and he said that all should sing. If you have a good voice, you should sing to give thanks to God for giving you the good voice. And if you have a bad voice, you should also sing to get back at God for giving you a bad voice. Now, whether you choose to use the gift of your voice to sing is a matter of your choice. But you know, the important thing I think about music is it's not so much the words that we're singing, words or the singing by itself, but it's the combination of lyrics and melodies and harmonies that we hear that, with music that come together that speak a message. It speaks a message of love to the heart that words simply cannot say on their own. Music is a love language. Just think for a moment of all those songs out there that are important to you. Those songs speak a message of love to you in a special way, and oftentimes they remember some of a special event. In our scriptures today, we hear a scribe ask Jesus, what is the first of all the commandments? Jesus responds by saying that the first is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. Jesus goes on to say that the second is to love your neighbor as yourself. Love God wholeheartedly. And to love your neighbor are two commandments that are closely mirror each other. So often when we follow the one, we're following the other as well. And we know these commandments well, not just by word, but also by the actions of our lives. We live lives of prayer. We do spiritual reading and we read scriptures. We go on retreats and make time for pilgrimages to foster that relationship with our God. We do various other activities to foster that relationship with our God as well because we love our God. We also share our resources with those who are in need. We show kindness to one another and we help each other that are in need because we love our neighbor. And we teach our children about these commandments and how to live these two commandments. And we oftentimes give them examples on how to live them, and sometimes the actions of our lives might even give, give examples on not how to live these commandments. And you know, the part of these commandments sometimes I think we can struggle with at times it's not in loving our God. 
nor is in loving our neighbor. Our struggle at times is in loving ourselves and allowing ourselves to be loved. In order for us to love, we need to allow ourselves to be loved in return. Somebody has to be the neighbor that gets loved. We know ourselves well. We are aware that what makes us good. And we're also aware of what makes us not so good. Our imperfections, our faults, our sins. It's in the midst of this sometimes we can say that we're not able to be loved because of our imperfections and our faults. Or we do not allow ourselves to be loved in the way that our God is calling us to be loved. And I must admit, I can be just as guilty of this as the next person. The Lord this week called me to be loved in a way I'd rather not be loved. For the last couple months, I've been having pain in my heel. And so I finally decided to go to the doctor to get, get some help, get it looked at. And the doctor gave some recommendations, and we worked at those, and it helped, but the pain was still there. Monday, I was told that I need to wear a boot for a couple weeks. I said, okay. Then I got to thinking, this is not going to be easy. I have to navigate steps with this thing, both in the rectory, but also to get up to the altar to say Mass. It's doable. It's just not as easy and don't move as quickly. And the other thing that this thing is pretty noticeable, it draws unwanted attention. And people are going to know, want to know what I did. And a million times you might have to explain why the story. And then there's the love and the sympathy and the support and everything that goes with it in people's responses. At times that can be overwhelming. I told the Lord, I really do not want this. I said, maybe I can cheat and not wear it, or at least in public. But the Lord says, not so fast. The Lord tells me, this is how I'm calling you to be loved right now. And all as I can say to God is fine. The Lord calls us to love him wholeheartedly, to love our neighbor. And do we do the best that we can to follow these commandments? It's in sharing this love we're also called to be the neighbor that gets loved. Sometimes in the ways that we least expect or would want to be loved. The question for us is do we allow ourselves to be loved? Do we allow ourselves to be loved when we're less than perfect. God loves you. Do you love you? Can you let you be loved?